government to Ken Corda. Ken Corda, I don't think it's uh, possible to overstate the impact and importance that universities have had on the course of Irish uh, history. We all know the role that was played by Trinity College over centuries, but also if you look back to the 19th century and the establishment of what was the Catholic University, which then became the Royal University and subsequently the National University, we can see that that had a huge impact in uh, establishing Irish independence. It educated a huge group of Irish nationalists who were able to articulate the cause of Irish independence. And I don't think that independence movement would have happened without the fact that we had a national university uh, in the country. I also think if you uh, look beyond that, that part of the reason why Ireland as a country has been so successful uh, since the Second World War is because of the fact that we've produced huge numbers of intelligent, articulate graduates uh, from the universities that we have in the country. And universities have an extraordinary transformative impact, not just on a country, but more specifically on a region. I believe UCD has had a huge impact in the whole Dublin region in terms of generating growth there. But as Minister Collins will know, when you look at Limerick, Limerick has to a large extent been transformed by the university which has grown there over the past uh, 30 years or so. So my hope is that the legislation that we're enacting today, along with the legislation in respect of the technological universities that was enacted more recently, will have the uh, impact of ensuring that we also can transform Irish society in a meaningful way, in the same way as universities transformed them in the past. I suppose one of the criticisms we can make of universities when we look back at them is that I suppose they were very targeted upon academic achievement and the creation of expertise within the professions or within the arts. One of the great benefits of the technological universities is that it's going to recognise that there are other aptitudes, there are other skills, there are other excellencies that can be developed as a result of technological universities. I had the opportunity, along with members of the uh, Education Committee, to visit the uh, Munster Technological University before Christmas. It's a wonderful location, and you could see the type of people that are being targeted there. And I think we need to ensure that universities and technological universities into the future are targeting not just those groups who are very talented academically, but also those groups who are very talented with their hands, mechanically, and uh, in other walks uh, of life. I also think that once we can target a broader group of people, that we'll be able to provide greater opportunities for them. Education is a liberation. It provides people with liberation. It enables them to achieve greater things within their lives. And hopefully those people who may have felt that the education system wasn't for them because their expertise was only in manual skills will now recognise that that expertise they can get through apprenticeships or through the technological universities is as worthwhile and significant as the other expertise that was achieved previously in respect of uh, academia. I think we also need to note that uh, under the bill we're trying to achieve a balancing act, we're trying to ensure that universities and third level institutions retain their academic independence and their intellectual independence whilst at the same time ensuring that since the state funds them, the state does have some level of control over them. And I think it was mentioned recently about the impact of COVID upon students. That was a devastating impact that they had upon their student lives. But I remember one of the uh, leaders or presidents of the universities was before the education committee, and he indicated that really was a matter for lecturers to determine when uh, lectures would recommence in person. That's not acceptable in circumstances where the state is funding uh, universities. It's not up to lecturers or individual institutions to decide when, whether or not and when they go back to in-person uh, teaching. And that's why it's so important that there is some outside regulation and control exerted uh, by uh, the state since we're giving that money. Listen, I think we need to also recognise, however, that what we don't want to do is to try to exert too much control over universities. The reason why they succeed, the reason why they're so influential, is because they have that intellectual independence. They're able to make decisions in respect of what type of academic uh, expertise they want to study, or in the case of technological universities, what manual expertise they want to study. So we think we need to retain that independence, whilst at the same time ensuring that the state is uh, getting good value for the money that we have to put into universities. And that's another debate we're going to return to, the funding of third-level institutions. Thanks. Ken Carla.